We're using the kitchen template file from the Blender Blocks content pack to demonstrate how to include dimensions in the render. You'll find a link to Blender Blocks on Gumroad in the description below, along with a link to the first video you'll need to watch to get up to speed. Measure It is a powerful measurement display add-on for Blender that lets us dimension objects with ease. This tool dynamically shows measurements in the viewport and when paired with the scene render includes them in the final output. Perfect for technical visualizations. We can begin by first enabling the add-on. Press F4 to bring up the context menu and open preferences. We'll head over to the get extensions tab to kick things off. In the search bar, let's start typing measure it to locate it quickly. It should pop up in the list, so let's click install to get it going. This action will also enable the add-on automatically, but we can double check this in the add-ons tab. If we search measure it, there it shows up with a check mark, confirming it's enabled and ready for action. Once the add-on is enabled, we can close down preferences. To locate the Measure It add-on from the 3D view, press the N shortcut to open the sidebar. Drag it closed or use the handy arrow on the side to toggle it open. You'll spot the add-on nested in the View tab. If we scroll down to the bottom, it's labelled Measure It Tools. Click and drag the grip on the side and we can rearrange the order of sections. Let's move this up to the top for convenience. Expand the add-on to reveal its settings. By default, Measure It starts with any dimensions in the file hidden, so click the Show button to make any dimensions we add visible. This first setting on the add-on is Segment. Segment calculates the distance between two vertices, an edge or even the four edges of a face, displaying the result right in the viewport for us to see. Let's first get the length of the exterior wall. Select this object and tab into Edit Mode by pressing Tab. We'll switch to Vertex Select Mode up top here first. Click that little dot icon to activate it. Then press and hold Shift, selecting the first vertex, and then the second vertex along the wall. Over on the add-on, we can click Segment to add a length dimension between those points. This creates a dimension based on the default configuration settings on the add-on. We can scroll down and expand the Configuration tab to tweak it. Here we'll see the color applied to the dimension. Let's click in here. Set the RGB values to zero and make it a crisp black for clarity. Next is the separation setting. This controls how far the dimension line sits from the vertices we've selected. Bump this up to 0.3 for a little bit more space. In the alignment dropdown, we've got options like left, right and center. However, if you set this to center, you lose the ability to rotate the dimension text. So let's leave it at the default, left for flexibility. In the arrow dropdown, let's add a triangle to spruce it up. Set this both ends to get a clean triangle at each side of the dimension line. We'll reduce that size to 12, so it's noticeable but not overbearing. The final setting is font size. We can increase this, and I find 20 works well but feel free to increase or decrease it, depending on your project scale. That's it for the configuration, so let's close this tab. When we add a dimension, it gets tied to an object and listed on the add-on. Here it is, our new dimension. Click the gear icon to expand or collapse its details. Use the eye icon to toggle its visibility in the viewport, handy for decluttering. Click into the color swatch and we can adjust the text color if needed. I'll set this to black to match the style we configured. In the name field, I like to include the dimension value to make it easily identifiable. Let's add 7.1 here to match the length. Now let's tab back to object mode for a moment and select another object. That dimension will vanish because we need to have the object with the dimension selected for it to show up, something to keep in mind as we work. The dimension is currently displayed in meters, but we can switch the unit type from the dropdown. Let's change this to millimeter for finer detail, which suits architectural work better. Then let's reduce the precision to zero to ditch those extra zeros and keep it clean. Let's take a look at the dimension properties and how to modify its appearance and position. Each dimension usually needs a little tweak to sit just right. When working from a dedicated view like front or top, we'll uncheck Automatic Position for more control. This reveals X, Y and Z fields, 
super useful for precise placement. Since this dimension aligns with the Y axis, we can zero out both the X and Z and input one in the Y to anchor it. That way we can use the distance setting to slide the dimension along the Y axis as needed. We pre-configured this distance value to 0.3, but now set it to whatever fits your scene. Experiment a bit. If necessary, we can adjust the X and Y fields to fine tune the dimension text's position relative to the line. Let's input 8 in the Y to raise it above the line for better readability. Let's add a second dimension and measure the length of the front edge of the counter. So let's select this object and hop into edit mode with tab. Then if we zoom in close, we can select the top vertex. Press and hold shift and grab the second vertex along the edge. Now back on the add-on, let's click segment to add this new dimension. In the name field, let's add 1600 to mark this counter length. Now expand the properties for more options. We can uncheck automatic position here too. This dimension aligns with the X axis and it's fine as is. The X has a value of one with Y and Z at zero, which works perfectly. In the rotation field, let's click in, input 90 and rotate that text to stand upright for a cleaner look. In the distance field, we're going to click and drag. Just pull this away from the stools and position it out front where it's unobstructed. Then we need to adjust the X to minus eight to nudge it leftward slightly. Next, use the Y field to center the text squarely on the dimension line. Tweak it until it feels balanced. Once complete, let's tab back to object mode. Another useful feature on the add-on is the area function. This calculates the area of a selected face, which is great for floor plans. Since our room doesn't have internal faces, we can temporarily create a face to measure the area, then delete it. The area dimension will stick around. So let's select the wall outline and tab into edit mode. We can measure the kitchen's area by selecting the four corner vertices of this room. Click each one while holding shift. Now we can create the temporary face by pressing F to fill it in. Over on the add-on, click area to generate the measurement. Let's delete that temporary face. Press X and choose face from the menu. The dimension stays put and even if we select the wall vertices and move them, the area dimension updates dynamically. Pretty neat, right? Let's right click to deselect. Over at the new area dimension listed here, we can add a name in the area name field. Let's call this kitchen area for clarity. For the area dimension, there are two color choices. The first changes the text color, while the second adjusts the area fill color and its transparency. Play with that opacity slider if you want a faint highlight. To show the text we typed into the name field, enable the text setting up top. This toggles text visibility for all dimensions globally, but each dimension has a local setting too. If we expand the 7.1 dimension, we can control the text visibility inside here too. Let's close this and come back to the area dimension. In here, let's adjust the X coordinate and prevent the text from overlapping another object. Apart from Blender's native text object, if we want to add text onto the floor plan, the add-on offers two options the label and annotation tools. Let's look at the annotation tool now to wrap this section up. We can first place the 3D cursor over in this area by pressing shift and right clicking. Position it where we want the annotation to sit. These get added in object mode, so let's switch back by tabbing out of edit mode if needed. Then add an annotation via the measure it tools panel. The annotation appears as an object with just an origin point when it's added to the scene. We can see its position coordinates here in the properties panel. This has been added as an object to the outliner too. Let's select it here and rename it annotation kitchen. So it's obvious it's an annotation tied to this space. In the annotation settings, click into the text field. Here, enter the text we want. Let's type kitchen and press enter to lock it in. Expand the settings to control its position on the X and Y axes. Nudge those values to fine tune placement. Then increase or decrease the font size to fit the scale of our layout. Now let's look at rendering the floor plan and dimensions. Let's press F12 to fire off a quick render and see what we've got. When that completes, one thing you'll notice is that the dimensions didn't show up in the render. 
The reason is that measure it dimensions are rendered separately from the main scene, a deliberate design choice for flexibility. Then both the camera render and the measure it render can be combined in the compositor for a polished result. Let's close this render window with X. We can head down to the render tab on the measure it add-on and expand it. In the drop down we've got two options, frame or animation. We want to render just the current frame, so select frame. The options below can stay at their defaults, they're optimized for most cases, and we can click render. That only takes a few moments because measure it renders just the dimensions with a transparent background, efficient and fast. If we press F12 now and open the render window, we'll see the render result listed here from the camera. Also in this menu is the measure it render, two separate outputs waiting to be merged. What we can do next is combine both pieces. To do that, let's close this with the X and switch into the compositing tab up top. The first thing we need to do is check use nodes to activate the node system. That makes the nodes available and we can blend the blender render and measure it render together using a node setup. Here we've got the render layers node for the scene camera's output and the composite node for the final result. The view layer is what we've rendered from the camera and the composite node will take our inputs to create the finished image. We want to add the measure it render, then layer it over the render layer node and plug that into the composite node. So first, let's add an image editor to access the measure it render. In the editor type menu, click and switch this to an image editor. Then over in the image dropdown, choose the measure it render option. We can zoom out a little with the mouse wheel. It's subtle because it's just dimensions over transparency. Left click and drag this image into the node editor to bring it in as a node. Let's make some space by dragging the composite node over to the right. Now let's add a node to combine these two renders. Press Shift plus A and from the color menu we can come across and find an alpha over node. Drop that between the nodes. If they don't connect, just drag the output from the render layers node and plug it into the top image slot on the alpha over node. This sets it as the base layer. Now drag the output from the measure it render node and plug that into the bottom image input slot. Its transparency will overlay perfectly. Then we can take the combined result of these two images and plug that into the composite node for the final output. To preview this, let's add a viewer node. Press Shift plus A and from the output menu, add a viewer node. Place it nearby. Take the result from the alpha over node and plug it into the viewer node. The viewer node is just for checking our work. Press V to zoom out and Alt V to zoom back in. What we see here is the final result when we render. So if we come to the render menu, we can click render image. Give that a moment to process. Now both the camera render and the measure it render have been combined into a seamless image. To save this, we can come to image and then save. Then navigate to your project folder. In the name field, let's rename it to kitchen floor plan. The default file format PNG and image settings are fine for most purposes. So now click save as image. That's the process of combining the measure it dimensions with the camera render, a straightforward way to produce detailed professional outputs. When you are done rendering measure it dimensions, make sure and reconnect the render layers node directly back to the composite node. Then these three nodes can be moved away and used later or deleted from the scene. Then just press F12 to check you can render again and make sure the scene renders as expected without dimensions.